let me ask you about something that's sort of more in the AI space that mm -hmm. I, th I think about that kind of goes along this thread that you're, that you've spoken about, about democratizing the technology that could destroy human civilization mm -hmm. is uh, from amazing work from DeepMind, AlphaFold 2, which achieved uh, incredible performance on the protein folding problem, single protein fold folding problem. Do you think about the use of AI in the SynBio space of, uh, I think the the gain of function in the virus space research that you referred to, I think is natural mutations and sort of aggressively mutating the virus until you get one that like, uh, that has this both contagious and um, deadly, but, what about then using AI to, through simulation, be able to compute deadly viruses or any kind of biological systems? Is this something you're worried about? Or again, is this something you're more excited about? I, mean, I think computational biology is unbelievably exciting and promising field. And I think when you're doing things in silica as opposed to in vivo, um, you know the, the dangers plummet. You, you don't have a critter that can leak from a leaky lab. Yes. So I don't see any problem with that, except um, I do worry about the data security dimension of it. Because if you were doing really, really interesting in silico gain of function research and you hit upon, you know, through a level of sophistication, we don't currently have, but you know, synthetic biology is an exponential technology. So capabilities that are utterly out of reach today will be attainable in five or six years. Um, I think if you conjured up worst case genomes of viruses that don't exist in vivo anywhere they're just in they're just in the computer space but like hey guys this is the genetic sequence that would end the world let's say mm. um then you have to worry about the utter hackability of every computer network we can imagine i mean data leaks um from the least likely places on the grandest possible scales have happened and continue to happen and will probably always continue to happen. And so that would be the danger of doing the work in silico. Um, if you end up with a list of like, well, these are things we never want to see, that list leaks. And after the passage of some time, certainly couldn't be done today, but after the passage of some time, um, lots and lots of people in academic labs going all the way down to the high school level are in a position to, you know, to make it overly simplistic, hit print on a genome and have the virus bearing that genome pop out on the other end, then you got something to worry about. But in general, computational biology, I think, is incredibly important, particularly because the crushing majority of work that people are doing with the protein folding problem and other things are about creating therapeutics, about creating things that will help us, you know, live better, live longer, thrive, be bit more well, and so forth. And the protein folding problem is a monstrous computational challenge that we seem to make just the most glacial project on, I'm sorry, progress on for years and years. But I think there's like a, there's a biannual competition, I think, uh, for, for at which people tackle the protein folding uh, problem. And um, DeepMind's entrant, uh, both two years ago, like in 2018 and 2020, ruled the field. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, protein folding is an unbelievably important thing if you want to start thinking about therapeutics because, you know, it's the folding of the protein that tells us where the, where the channels and the receptors and everything else are on that protein. And it's from that precise model, if we can get to a precise model, that you can start barraging it again in silico with, you know, thousands, tens of thousands, millions of potential therapeutics and see what resolves the problems, the shortcomings that a, you know, a, bat, a misshapen uh, pro protein, for instance, somebody with cystic fibrosis, how might we treat that? So I see nothing but good in that.